Former Eagle Javon Hargrave exposes the Eagles' soft practices. A.J. Brown knee injury definitely gave us a scare, but we saw him walking pretty good after the game. But somebody leaked his players-only meeting? As for the young high flyer, Cindy Brown, he tore his ACL. However, Ocho Cinco came out with some positive things to say about the Eagles. I'm not sure how he does it, but he was so calm, cool, collective, and he firmly believed it. Lastly, Emmanuel Ocho destroys the Eagles' defense, and Baldy destroys the Eagles' offense versus the Blitz. What is going on, everybody? I go by Philly Mike, and this is the Philly Tall Podcast. And yes, we still got to talk about our Eagles, but before we get into it, can I ask y'all for a favor? If you don't want to do it for the Eagles, I understand, but do it for your boy Philly Mike. Hit that like button, subscribe if you are new, and turn on that notification bell if you haven't so you don't miss the videos. Let's jump right into AJ Brown showing love after the heartbreaking loss. And yes, he was injured after the fumble, but showing love to Smith, Kelsey, Carter, and company, right? I love it because the team needs any type of spark. And AJ being hurt, he could be down and out. But he's at the entrance of the locker room with Big Dom, who's back for the playoffs, showing love after a heartbreaking or disgusting loss, we can say. It's not easy being a guy like A.J. Brown trying to galvanize the team and you fumble and get hurt on your first actual opportunity. Again, seeing him with Big Dom and him posting this on his IG after the game the next day, Friday, I won outro. I feel good about him suiting up Monday night versus the Bucks on Wild Car Weekend. Speaking about the injured players, Nick Sirianni kind of commented on Smitty, AJ, Cindy Brown, and Jalen Hurts. Pretty much saying we need to see more throughout the week, but he's hopeful for Smitty, AJ Brown, and Jalen Hurts, who did dislocate his finger versus the Giants, but John Clark tweeted, good news, source confirms an x-ray on Jalen Hurts' finger shows there's no fracture in his dislocated finger. That means he's going to have to play through some pain, and I don't know how much Schmitty and AJ will be playing through the pain, but we do got a guy who's done for the season. Mike Garofalo was the first one to report the ACL tear from Sidney Brown, which was believed and confirmed. This is what Sidney Brown said on IG. These moments are all about how you respond. I have never been more motivated in my life. This has just added gas to the fire within. I love y'all, Philly. This right here is so sad. For a young player who's as passionate as Sidney Brown, who started playing his best football and also started playing a couple more snaps each game for the Eagles, his breakout game was against the Bucks Week 3 where he got hurt, but we could have used him in the playoffs. We all knew the weather was going to be bad and that giant stadium is bad. Injuries happen a lot. I think 17 plus this season. There was no reason to play our starters. And again, A.J. Brown has been trying to get this team together with the escape room, with his big speech in the middle of the week, not holding anything back. Also, it was reported that A.J. Brown led a players-only meeting this week to try to rally his team per Jay Glazer. This was before the absolute disaster we saw versus the New York Giants. His exact words were, we got to start believing in our coaches. Huh? So previously, you guys weren't believing in the coaches. For you to say, we got to start believing, that means you weren't believing, and you're trying to get the guys to believe this is too much week 18. But after hearing that, I got to thinking, how could a players-only meeting get leaked to someone like Jay Glazer? Maybe somebody in the organization saw the players go into a meeting and just assumed it. But there was an exact quote from the meeting and believing in the coaches. That means somebody's giving up that information somehow, some way, which shows they don't believe in the coaches. Plus, Hargrave said our practices are too soft. But I can say it's like extremely hard to like practices like even like uh here it's more yeah here yeah, yeah, yeah. It's very more demanding yeah um, we, we i think it's like i think it's like more so like um how people call like the golden state coach in the miami heat yeah. over here is the miami heat over there is the golden state because yeah. it's more chill more relaxed you know you just you chilling over here? Nah, it's work. Yeah. <laughs> it's like every day, every day you about to get it. Like you know, Cal, Cal. I feel like Cal is like Pat Riley. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's just like 
You know, you know what you're getting over here. Like everybody yeah. can't make it over here for sure. Hey. Everybody can't make it over here. He started by saying both cultures are good, right? He had a nice bond with his Philly people. He got a nice bond with his Niner people. And yes, we went to the Super Bowl with some chill, relaxed coaching. But once you get a big head, maybe you get more chilled, more relaxed. Maybe when you're losing, the chill, relaxed type coaching ain't going to bring the guys back in. Something is wrong in this locker room because when you look at the Eagles roster on paper, it's still good. Woosa, woosa. Yeah, I had to do that in the middle of this video. But let's hear from Ocho Cinco, who said the Eagles are playing possum. I know my Eagles fans. I know y'all upset. Uh, I think they're going to fix it. I think the Eagles, Eagles players, I think they're playing possum. I know what they're doing. They're allowing their bodies to reset. They're allowing their, their minds to mentally reset. And watch what happens come playoff time. Watch what happens next week. Watch what I tell you. I tell you no lie. I lie for you before I lie to you. Watch what them boys do. I know it. I'm familiar with their game. I know what they're doing. Eagles fans, I tell you, I, tell you, I, I, I know what I'm talking about now. Now watch. He sound confident, right? But it's more than the players correcting it. It's the coaches. Listen to this breakdown on the defensive side before we go back to the same old thing. The Eagles do not know how to adjust First, the blitz. We make Jalen Hurts' job so much harder, but let's start with the defense. Eagle fans, break out the vomit bags. This is about to be disgusting. Watch what's going on. First play of the game, Hassan Reddick, the Eagles defense, they are in cover two. Number one, why is this player who has four consecutive seasons of 10 plus sacks dropping in coverage? But if he is going to drop in coverage, you have to understand the coverage assignment. Cover two, eyes on the quarterback. Stay in coverage. You cannot blitz. You're not a blitzer. You are now a coverage player. Hassan Reddick, you cannot vacate this zone because if you trigger and you blitz, all of a sudden, Plus 20 yard gain. That's the first play of the game, family. Let's cut to later on in the game. Now, this is what we call the fire zone three. It's a three deep, three under coverage concept. Cornerback, he's deep. Bradbury, he's deep. Safety off the screen, he's deep. Now, what you're going to see here, Josh Sweat, he is off of the number three wide receiver. Count from outside in. One, two, Saquon Barkley, he's going to be three. Down safety, he's off the number two wide receiver. Count from outside in. One, Two, again, Saquon is three. Let's see how this plays out. Now, Sweat, why they got this dude dropping in coverage? Sweat, he's like, okay, I'm off of number three. I'm off of number three, but here's the problem, America. He is now the number three receiver because the running back who was three, he went to the flat, making him two. The number two receiver who was two, he came in, making him number three. Josh Sweat, he has to just drop backwards because now count from outside in. One, two, Three, just like that, you got two dudes covering one, plus 33-yard gain against the Philadelphia Eagles defense. I told you, break out your vomit bags, it gets worse. Later on in the game, empty formation, you're going to see a quarters coverage look, which means this linebacker, number 52, he is the quarter flat defender on the number two wide receiver, quarter flat. You have him 12 yards vertically, collision him, if he goes to the flat, you got him to the flat. If he goes to the flat, you got him to the flat. Because if you don't take him to the flat, ain't nobody taking him to the flat. So I do not have a clue what the Eagles defense is doing. But I do know it is atrocious. It is awful. It is gross. I don't know what they're putting on tape. They look poorly coached. And Matt Patricia, Sean Desai, Nick Sirianni do not look like they have given these players enough repetitions to know how to cognitively play any sort of competent defensive football. I'm done. Ocho, are you sure we're going to fix it? I want to. And I'm going to stream Eagles versus Buccaneers in the playoffs because a little piece of me believes, a small little piece. However, we're favored? The line opened with the Eagles being one and a half favorites. The next day, it went up to two and a half. A couple hours later, don't got the picture, it's up to three point favorites for the road team, the Eagles, who in their last six is one and five compared to the Buccaneers, who are home, are 5-1. and one. Yeah, on paper we're better, but not the last six weeks. By the way, I saw this route tree chart by Amon St. Brown. Let's look at it. I mean, I understand it was 12 receptions for only 106 yards and a touchdown, but look, he lines up to the left, to the right, 
inside, outside. He does every single route. They move him around a lot. Why can't we do this with a Smitty or an AJ? It is just ridiculous. And again, before I let Baldy break down how bad the Eagles passing game is, when we get blitz, let's take a look at Jalen Hurts' numbers and what the Bucks do via the blitz. Jalen Hurts on the season, completion percentage is 60.5. 1,306 yards, six touchdowns, eight interceptions, three dropped interceptions, a 74.1 rating, which ranks 28th in the NFL when getting blitzed. The Buccaneers defense blitzes at the third highest percent rate in the league. We haven't been able to fix it in two years. What makes us think we're going to fix it next week? Let me know your thoughts in the comments section. Now, before we get to Baldy, because he goes off, let's hear a word from our sponsor. Bet US America's favorite sports book, where you can bet on everything, anytime. Sportsbook, casino, horse racing, live betting, and more. We have the best bonuses in the industry. That's right, get a 125% sign-up bonus. And to celebrate our 30-year anniversary, we are giving up to 30 risk-free bets, a truck, Super Bowl tickets, and more. Don't miss out. Play smart. Join now. BetUS, where the game begins. Not only that. You could get Super Bowl tickets as well. Yes, you could be at the big game. Even if the Eagles don't go, do you know how fun it will be in Vegas for the Super Bowl? How to participate? Three simple things. One, place a bet on any NFL line and share your bet slip on X slash Twitter, minimum $25. Two, tag at BetUS underscore official and the friend you're inviting. And last but not least, number three, use the hashtag Bet US with the Super Bowl numbers. Super Bowl tickets are Super Bowl tickets, whether you can go or sell them for a huge chunk, then you can bet more on Bet US. Receive a 125% bonus as well just by clicking the link in the description and or the pinned comment section. Because they completely broke down their protections. And the Eagles don't have an answer when they blitz like they do right here. Here comes the slot defender right at Jalen Hurts, right? He's got no answers. There's no sight adjust, there's no hot, there's nothing. Jalen Hurts is forced just to get out of the pocket and throw it away. When you watch it, like, here he comes, Cordell Float. Float's coming right here. All right? You can see, like, even right here, Jurgen sees it. But he got no answer for it. Like, nobody's looking for the ball. So Jalen Hurts gets out of the pocket. I mean, it's awful. You watch it right here. Here we go. Overload blitz. Here they come. Overload blitz right here. Here they come. Like, nobody is looking for the ball. I will say the crosser is looking for the ball, but Jalen is already with pressure in his face at this point. Now, stall's open, but he's not looking for the ball, and there's no way Jalen can hold it for him to turn around. He throws it, something bad could happen. So I agree with Baldy, but maybe the crosser. But again, free blitzer right in his face, just an absolute disaster. Play call, line check. And there's a little bit on Jalen, but it's more on the line and the play call. Go ahead, Baldy, continue. All right, so Jalen gets hit right here, okay? It's one time after another. This is fourth and three. Fourth and three, it's man coverage. Clearly, it's man coverage. Nobody gets off the jam on fourth and three. Like right here, everybody's jammed, and Jalen's just holding it, waiting. But then Okareki comes around. Like, you can't wait forever. The Giants are going to, here he comes, off the short corner, right at jail. He's got to make the throw. And he gets his hands hit, and the ball just flutters. The passing game is pathetic. Now, look, if Jalen, if the center and the right guard don't pick this up, and he bails, all right, well, all four receivers are over here. There's nobody over here to get the ball to. So he just throws it away. <clears throat> like, here's a safety blitz right here. Here it comes. Like, there's no answer to any of their blitzes. Nothing. Like, it's like they don't even exist. What's the quarterback supposed to do? Sack. I mean, it's bad. Like, okay, Rashad Penny has five carries in 17 weeks. You can put him in a game. All right, well, let's see what his pass protection is like. Not very good. All right, here comes Okareki. Maybe we got to chill on the, we need to play Rashad Penny. I'm just kidding. I don't know. A lot of bad. We played our starters to get our mojo back. Not only did we not get the mojo back, we got people nicked up and hurt for the season. At the end of the day, if we would have lost to the Giants with our backups, it's like, cool, right? We don't get to see the Eagles 
get their mojo back, but we wouldn't be feeling this bad. I don't know why we're favored. Let me know all your thoughts in the comment section, Eagle Nation. Drop the muscle emoji. It is good luck. We can use as much good luck as possible. Wild card round, bro. Wild card round. We'll keep you updated on everything. Help your boy out by hitting that like, subscribe if you are new, and turn on that notification bell so you don't miss these videos. And again, let me know your thoughts. I love hearing from y'all. We out.